Hey guys, my name's Nick, no mods on the forums. Uh, today I'm going to go over real quickly basically how to dismantle an OEM shaft and uh, get you ready for long travel. Um, I've seen a couple of videos posted on YouTube myself and uh, I've kind of figured out a few tricks here and there to pass along. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to install this longer shaft. This is a three and a half inch uh, longer shaft. Uh, from Total Chaos, and we're going to be using an OEM uh, Toyota CV axle. The first part of this process uh, is basically to dismantle the clips and remove the boots. We'll go ahead and we'll use a pair of dykes or something like that to just go ahead and start separating the little bands. Basically, we'll get in there. So what we're going to do now that we have the, um, the clamps, the boot clamps removed, we're going to go ahead and we're going to dismantle the, out, or the inside inboard uh, joint. We'll go ahead and we'll basically start by peeling back the boot and you'll basically expose some nasty slime and we're going to go ahead and just basically dump as much of the excess grease as you can in, uh, into the trash. I'm going to go ahead and grab a rag, reach in there, and get out all the old CV grease. And the reason I'm doing this is I don't want to contaminate my parts cleaner too much. So we're going to just try to get out as much grime as we can. Okay, now that we have most of it taken out, we're just going to go ahead and set it in the parts washer uh, to be cleaned up a little bit later. And we're going to go ahead and uh, figure out what we're going to do with the inside thing. Now, what you'll have to do is again, clean off the excess CV grease. As much as you can to expose the little lock ring that holds the inboard spider or tulip or whatever you want to call it onto the OEM shaft. You can see there, there is a little clip. We're going to go ahead and remove that now. The next part um, is going to be the removal of the inboard tulip or spider. Uh, basically what we're going to do is use a pair of snap ring pliers and uh, go ahead and take off the snap ring off the top that holds it together. So we'll go ahead and we'll reach in. And you might have to use a little bit of force, but we basically take that snap ring off. And you're ready to go ahead and remove the inboard tulip. Now, sometimes it just slides off other times it needs a little bit of coaxing. If it needs some coaxing, go ahead again, make sure it's nice and clean so you have a good work surface. And we're going to use um, either a nylon or a brass punch uh, to kind of knock it off. Basically, off camera, um, I went, go, went ahead and took off the inboard uh, tulip or spider. Uh, it was, uh, took a little more coaxing than I had previously thought, uh, but it is off now. We'll go ahead and set that in the parts washer to be cleaned up. Now, what we've got now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take off uh, the outside boot. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is just go ahead and slide this guy on down. And uh, again, we'll put it in the uh, temporary hold bin to be cleaned up. Off camera, I went ahead and already took care of most of the grease that was in this, uh, in this burr field. Uh, basically, when we go to slide hammer it or when we go to bang it out, uh, if you have excess grease in there, it gets over all over everything, including anything uh, within a five foot radius. So what we're gonna do here is basically take a hold of a pipe. Now I'm using a uh, one and a quarter inch um, black iron pipe from Home Depot and an old, um, an old disc uh, as a uh, surface to bang on. All we're gonna do here is take a hold of our pipe. We're gonna go ahead and slide the OEM shaft down in the pipe 
Now, the key here, what I've found is the pipe actually has to hit on the inboard, inboard side. Uh, I've seen videos where they say to weld a plate on the top, cut a hole. That didn't work for me. The key here is it has to ride on that spider on the inside. So what we're going to do here is basically use the weight of the shaft as its own little slide hammer kind of uh, thing. And hopefully this comes right out. Okay, um, what you'll see here is now I've got the outer burr field dismantled. A um, couple of tips here. I forgot to mention on the previous segment, uh, we want to make sure that our surface that we're banging on is, um, is really tough. I'm using this old rotor. What the problem was, I think, beforehand is that the uh, inside not being on a flat surface acting as kind of a shock absorber. So as soon as I flipped it over and uh, used that sturdy surface, this thing took only a few bangs and it was right out. Now, if you're planning to use the OEM shaft, we will make sure that I, I mentioned uh, it's best if you put something in the end of this pipe to keep the, uh, the grooves on the end intact. Secondly, we want to make sure that when we bang the axle out, the C-clip that was retaining that burr field uh, is, is in fact attached to the shaft and not stuck in the burr field. I've, uh, I've got all the parts out of the parts washer. Uh, basically, we're going to go through uh, the final reassembly of the uh, extended length uh, CV shaft. Again, this is the three and a half inch one from Total Chaos. Um, and we're going to go ahead and put the OEM parts back onto it. So we're first going to start you off, um, what you'll notice here is the C-clip. This is the part that we were banging on with the, um, with the pipe and the rotor. We're going to essentially take the cleaned up burr field. We're going to go ahead and basically assemble it. Uh, make sure that it goes right in the thing. Now, what I would suggest here is this is a good time to go ahead and apply your, some, some of your grease. Um, a quick thing on that. What I've got here, you can buy these. This is this came from O'Reilly or Napa or whatever. Uh, it's basically three ounces. Um, it's a couple of different ones. This is a Speedy Boot and this is Stay Lube. Uh, both, what I've realized, are about three ounces. So, um, what I would encourage you to do is either use one of these, or if you want to do it the cheap way like I did, I just went and got some um, uh, Molly that's designed to be high pressure. Uh, stuff. So we're going to go ahead and uh, use this about three ounces um, is what will actually go in here. But for the time being, we're just going to apply a little light lube to the ends of the splines here to make sure that nothing is metal on metal. We get some good lubrication going up in there. Uh, so again, what we're going to go ahead uh, and this guy goes together basically. Very straightforward, we slide that guy in, and we're gonna give it a tap. Now what I'm gonna use here is a piece of wood. Um, we're just gonna basically slide it on in. Now it's locked together, just make sure I've confirmed. It's good to go. So, now that we've got the, the end piece assembled, we're gonna go ahead and uh, slide on the, the boot. Now if I remember correctly, I believe the larger, yes, the larger boot, is going to go ahead and slide up onto the burr field. We'll just go ahead and temporarily attach that. And then we're going to go ahead and put our inside boot on, as well as our spider. I'm going to put some lube on that. And we're going to go ahead and uh, tap it down. Now you'll notice it slid right on there. We'll basically use a rubber mallet. Just go ahead and give a little love tap. Make sure it's on there completely. And then we'll go ahead and reapply the C-clip that we took off earlier. We'll again use our snap ring pliers. Just spread it out. and it should snap right in the groove at the very end. And again, you want to make sure that it's all the way in there. So the 
C-clip has been fighting me the entire way. Okay, now we heard the click. I'm going to check for visual confirmation it is in fact in the groove because if that slides out, you're in a world of trouble. Now, what we're going to go ahead and do is go ahead and fill it up with the grease and we'll go ahead and apply the, uh, the clamps. Okay guys, I had a few afterthoughts that I feel like I should probably include uh, because I think they're important tips or tricks rather that maybe I didn't make clear when I was uh, taking apart this axle. Um, the first being when you slam the OEM shaft, you want to make sure that you're hitting on something steel and as unforgiving as possible. An anvil would be great. However, you know, this was something that I had laying around that I figured would work well. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't capture it on camera, but it's the second that I flipped the rotor over, it hit twice and basically it was broken within a few seconds. Uh, so we want to make sure that you're using something uh, ultra sturdy and as unforgiving as, again, a piece of steel um, or an anvil. Secondly, uh, I mentioned that I've already cracked a couple of inboard boots. Uh, I've been reading around, people are doing some sort of shim, um, a shim type of trick where they're taking a piece of rubber and essentially sliding it on the shaft to prevent the inside, the inboard boot, from scooching down the, the axle shaft. So what I did is I ran a little zip tie to give myself my whatever, an eighth of an inch, um, of extra thing. Now if I start rubbing boots to get boots out then that's something I'll have to reevaluate. Uh, secondly what you'll notice here is that all my clips are opposite one another. I'm not sure if it's gonna matter or not um, but I figured from a balance standpoint it's probably something wise to do. Um, and finally on the ends here, I want to make sure that you note, uh, you take, make sure you're real careful as to not disrupt these little tin oil seals. Um, you start, you'll start failing wheel bearings that much faster if you lose the integrity. Uh, I know when I was dismantling this, I got a little rough on that one side and you can see I, I deformed it a little bit and it's going to have to be cleaned up before it goes back actually in the truck. So uh, hopefully those tips will make dismantling the OEM shaft that much easier and reassembling with the extended travel shaft in place. Uh, overall time, including making this video, was about an hour and a half. So kind of plan accordingly. If I hadn't done it on film, it'd probably been a lot faster. But there you have it. See you on the trails, guy. Bye.